the difficulty we have is there is no one diagnostic criteria that is uniformly applied. Because of that, it's sometimes very difficult to unpick the different types of condition that are grouped together. And until we begin to do that and have greater understanding of the different conditions, it's going to be very difficult to get really good treatments. We have a research report from one of the clinical referral centres in Newcastle where 40% of the patients who were referred for hospital management were not actually found to have ME when they'd been properly assessed. I think the cardinal parts of the illness are what's called post-exertional malaise, where any kind of effort physical but also mental, makes all of the symptoms worse, typically about 12 to 48 hours afterwards. When you look at the patient perspective, post-exertion malaise is described as a debilitating crash following minimal exertion that can take weeks to recover from. So in fact, one of the diagnostic criteria for this disease is post-exertional malaise or post-exertional intolerance so that if you do exercise, you get worse. That's a diagnostic criteria. The one they used primarily was the Oxford criteria. Six months of unexplained fatigue is likely to be a proxy for undiagnosed depression, undiagnosed anxiety disorders, what we call idiopathic chronic fatigue for reasons we don't know. But fatigue and pain are basically the two most common symptoms that patients tend to present with to a general practitioners. So if that's your category, that's gonna be a problem. Studies can be critiqued in terms of how representative they are. That's what we call sampling. You cannot simply generalize from this study to everybody with a diagnosis because there are peculiarities in how these people were selected. So if sampling is a big problem in psychology and behavioral research, and it's loud and clear in the PACE trial as well. Unfortunately, the main treatments that are recommended by the NHS are two treatments called cognitive behaviour therapy and graded exercise therapy, and there are problems with both of these treatments. We know that this is not a mental health condition, it's not an illness that is perpetuated by psychological factors, and we know from our own surveys that graded exercise in actual fact makes about over 50% of people with this illness worse.